What's up with the what's up? It's G LaVey and welcome to my channel. Now today I'm giving you this super cute cardigan. You can make it in tons of colors, tons of weights. You know I got you covered with telling you about the different kind of yarns and all that. Now without further ado, let's get into it. Don't forget to hit that like button. If you like what you see, subscribe. If you want to subscribe, baby, let's go. So first up is Paint Box Simply Aron Yarn. Now this is a weight for, but it's a different kind of weight for. It got a lot of weight to it. It's so warm and cozy. And I use the instructions that I use in this video for this cardigan and got a different size than with other yarns. It's super heavy, so if you're making this, you're going to be so warm, and you're going to drop it one time. Boom. Next up, we have this impeccable yarn, Tweed. I believe we're coming around five colors, and it's a weight four, but like a lightweight four-ish. It's super, like, smooth, lightweight to throw on under anything. Next is this ice yarn, Arara. It's 50% cotton, 50% acrylic. I love how it feels. Feels so expensive-ish to me. And it's lightweight you can wear for spring. Last but not least, this is a finished product of what we made in the video. And this is using Impeccable Yarn, the solids line. I have everything listed below in the color plum. I just love how it feels. Just a reminder that all weight for yarns is created differently, if you get what I'm saying. So you might want a thick, you might want a lightweight, just check your yarn, get a feel for it, make a swatch and all of that. Now when it comes to this cardigan, you could go crazy with the colors. Y'all get so creative, and I mean, so creative. So let's get into it, like hello. Okay, for this tutorial, I'll be using Impeccable Yarn. It's a weight for yarn, 285 yards, and it's in the color Plum. It's really a muted purple. I'm not sure how it's coming off on camera, but it's kind of cute. I'll link everything below. I'm using a 5 millimeter hook. Just grab some scissors, a tapestry needle, some stitch markers, and let's get to it. Ain't nothing to it but to do it. Okay, so we're going to start with making a magic loop. Now, if you have problems making a magic loop, just chain, flow, uh, 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 chain four and slip stitch into the first chain. But I'm going to do a, the magic loop. And I'll list the video below on how to do it. I'll just wrap it around my two fingers. Hold it like that. This is how it look. Cross. Yarn under the first one, pull the second one through, twist under that second one and pull through and that will be our first chain. Like I said, I will link below how to do the magic loop or a video that can help you with that or you could just chain four and slip stitch in the very first chain. So now to get the first half of the cardigan, we're going to be making a granny hexagon. It's super similar to a granny square. So go ahead and chain up three, two, and that's for everyone. Even if you did the chain four and slip stitch in the first chain, and you're going to go ahead and place two double crochets right in that hoop or that first chain that you did. So that's one cluster. You're gonna go and chain two and do three double crochets right in that hoop. One, ooh, why am I counting out loud? Three, okay, you're gonna chain two and repeat that four more times with a total of six clusters. So that's three so far. Okay. 
So after that chain two, slip stitch on top of that first double crochet we did after that chain three space. Slip stitch in the next one. And slip stitch under that chain two space. And now we have our first round. You could go ahead and pull your string in a bit. And you see like it's a mini hexagon. Okay, so now for row two, I'm gonna chain up three again. So after that chain three, go ahead and place two double crochets. This is just like a granny square, but more sides, you know? Chain two and three double crochets in that same space. After that, chain one, and we're gonna repeat this step of three double crochets. Chain two, three double crochets. Chain one, and I'm gonna repeat that three double crochets, chain two, three double crochets, chain one, four times. After that, three double crochet, chain two, three double crochet in that last space, chain one. And for each round, just slip stitch in that first double crochet and slip stitch your way over until you're under the chain two space and chain up three. So that was round two and this is how it's looking. Now, as you continue your rows, you wanna make sure that you're hitting every corner because <laughs> I was making this hexagon and then it turns out pentagon, then a triangle and it wasn't cute. So you wanna make sure you have all your sides and hitting all your corners, placing that three double crochet, chain two, three double crochet. For the size that I'm doing, I'm doing a total of 15 rows. I will list on the screen how many rows I suggest if you're using the weight for yarn in the five millimeter hook. I will list those sizes on the screen. They are suggested sizes. You could go based on trying it on and things of that nature, but I would definitely list what I suggest for your size. Okay. So now for row three, chain up that three. After you do your slip stitch, place your two double crochets, chain two, three double crochets. And that's for every row you'll be starting like that. Chain one. And now where we have that chain one space, we're gonna do three double crochets. And it's like that throughout the pattern, just like a granny square. And you chain one after that. And then you do your three double crochets, chain two, three double crochets. Chain one, I have that chain one space. And I'll be placing three double crochets, chain one. And that's a corner, so we do our three double crochets, chain two, have a chain one space, so that's three double crochets, chain one. And I'm gonna repeat that same pattern all the way around. I'll put it right on the screen so you can follow along. Thank you. 
So I just did my three double crochets in that chain one space. I'm going to chain one and slip stitch in that second double crochet and all the way over to the chain two space. So this is how my hexagon is looking. And this was my third row. So as you as you continue your rows, it will just get bigger and start looking a little discombobulated, which is great for how we need to fold it. And I will list suggested rows for your size. And I'm working on a size small with this project. I will list all the sizes that I suggest when it comes to how many amount of rows you should do for your hexagon. But it totally goes based on you how you want it to fit. If you want a baggier fit and you're a size small, you'll do more rows, etc., etc. But I will list my suggested size and the measurement for my small all on the screen. Now, I really hope that helps. So I'm going to continue this for 12 more rows with a total of 15 rows for my size small. So just continue as if you were doing your granny square. And I'll be back when I'm done with my 15 rows. And I'll check in with you. So this is row 3. So after you finish each row and you slip stitch in that chain 2 space, you'll chain 3 and do 2 double crochets. In that corner, chain two, three double crochets in that same space. And you chain one after that. And place in three double crochets in the chain one space, chain one after that, three double crochets, chain one in that next chain one space. And the pattern just simply repeats itself. Just follow what's on the screen. And I'll check in with you when I have my total of 15 rows. So this is my row four. You want to make sure you're going into every corner with that three double crochet, chain two, three double crochet. Trust me, I made this plenty of times and sometimes I will miss a corner and it turns to a pentagon, a triangle, rectangle. It gets real ugh. So make sure you're going into all your corners. Okay, so I finished my 15 rows for the size that I'm doing, which is a size small. And now we're going to work on just expanding three sides. So this is for all sizes. So expanding, this is where we ended for whatever amount of rows you did or whatever. And we're going up one, two, three, and then going back around. So this is what's going to be extending the panel so it's closer together in the front and the back. You'll see in a second. So now to expand just those three sides, we'll just simply chain up three. And in this little chain two space we have in the corner where we will usually do the two double crochet chain two, Three double crochets we're just going to place one double crochet chain one and continue the pattern like how we would regularly go 
and place our three double crochets, chain two, three double crochets. Same in this corner. And when we get right here, that's when we'll stop and place two double crochets. So I'm gonna go ahead and work this side. So I'm approaching that corner. All I'm gonna do is just place my three double crochets, chain two, three double crochets. And now, I just finished one side, so this is where the chain two it's at and if you need to you could just simply place a stitch marker here just so you know where you end it now i'm gonna work this side exactly how we did before placing three placing three double crochets chain one three double crochets and the three double crochet chain two three double crochets in them corner spaces. So now I'm at the second corner right here. So this side is complete. That's the second side. And one more side after that. Just gonna place that three double crochet, chain two, three double crochet. And now for this last side, the third side. Just gonna do the same thing till we get to that corner space. And in that corner space, we'll place two double crochets. So I reached the end of that third row and I'm just going to place two double crochets right in there. So now we're going to go back around and we're just going to chain four. After that chain four in that chain one space, place your three double crochets. So I'm going to turn my work. And now we're just going back around those three sides. Just like how we continue the pattern. Do your three double crochets, chain one. And in the, in the corner spaces, you'll just do your three double crochets, chain two, three double crochets. Yeah, that's what you do, yeah. <laughs> So I'm just working my way back around the three sides. So I'll just reach the corner, do your three double crochets, chain two, three double crochets. That was the one of the three sides going back around. So I got two sides left. Chain one. Now we're gonna work on the second side. So 
So I just did the three double crochet, chain two, three double crochet in that second row corner. So now we're going on our last row and we're gonna work our regular pattern until we get to this last chain one space. So now I have this one space left. After that chain one, you just do your three double crochets, chain one, and place one double crochet in, on top of that chain three that we did from when we first started the extension. So now we did our extension, chain up one, Cut your yarn, pull through, like boop. Okay, so now after that, you're gonna match up the chain three with the other corner that we did when we only did the three sides. So this is one side, second side, this is the third. So you're matching it up with the chain four space. So you literally just go right across your work and match it up. So now it should look a little something like this. So now it should look like this. Now if you have problems matching it up, feel free to place a stitch marker right into that chain four space and the double crochet we did in the chain three space, but you're just going across and matching that up. Let me show you. So this is from the first edge of our um, three sides that we did. I just took that chain four space and put it right on top of that double crochet, just like that. So now you should have like a little L shape. And this is how it looked. So now we're gonna seam up the sides. So you just put some yarn on your tapestry needle. So now I have my yarn. And we're gonna do the mattress stitch, or you could do a whip stitch or a slip stitch. I like the way the mattress stitch look, but use your seaming method that you do that's best for you. So now, let me show you where we're starting. So this is our extension. Those two rows, that's our extension. And then you match up that three double crochet, chain two, three double crochet, with the back side of that. So when seaming this up, we're gonna skip this three double crochet, chain two, three double crochet. And we're gonna make sure everything is matched up right behind it. So those three double crochets matching these three double crochets. And we're gonna attach our yarn right through the chain one space before those three double crochets. Right here. And we're gonna seam along the side. So I'm going to use the mattress stitch for this. So I'm just gonna go through both sides to secure. So I'm gonna just pull this through to secure and pull it through again to knot. And I'll link below the mattress stitch for a detailed video. But basically, you wanna make sure all the stitches is matched up for the mattress stitch. Since that's secured, I go in. So I'm going in on top of the first double crochet. Like I said, you could use any seaming method you choose. I'm gonna go right through. I'm gonna pull through. And then I'm gonna go right on top of the corresponding matching double crochet. Just like that. Pull, and I'm gonna repeat. Just make sure that the stitches is lined up. And like I said, you can use any seaming method that works best for you. But this is pretty much the one I use in a lot of tutorials. And I'm gonna do that all the way down. Kind of like a shoelace. And when it comes to the chain one spaces, you wanna make sure you go through that and match up the chain one space on the other side. So I'm gonna do this and I'll meet you when I am done. 
so I just finished seaming inside. Now you really want to make sure you get in them corners. Just gonna get right up in them corners and secure the corners just like that. Nothing fancy. And I'm gonna do it one more time. Just do it the best way you know how to. If you have different methods, feel free to go ahead and do your thing. And this is how the seam look. I really, really like the mattress theme. Like I feel like I use it in so many videos. This is how I look on the other side. Like, come on. Okay. Stop playing. Now we're gonna work on extending the arm. So for this portion, I measured just a couple of inches before my wrist. I do a total of five rows. I'll list all the inches and everything on the screen. But now we're gonna work our rounds for making the arm portion longer. Now you could do this however long you want. I'm doing this just for five rows. Now let's work on extending this part. I'm just gonna attach my yarn to this piece now. If you, so if you don't have any yarn left from seaming the shoulder seam, just attach your yarn right in the seam part. I'm just gonna attach my yarn to this little piece here. Okay, so now I'm gonna put my hook right through this little space right here and chain up three. And we're gonna place two more double crochets. This will be row one of extending the arm. I'm going to chain one, three double crochets. Chain one, then three more double crochets. And I'm gonna do that all the way around until I get to this space right here. Let's see when I get back. Okay, so I'm in this little chain one space now. I'm just gonna place three double crochets. Chain one. And with this little space right here, we're gonna do three double crochets, chain one and slip stitch right on top of that chain three space we started with. And now, so the for the extension of your arm part into the cuff, it's just gonna be repeating two rows. So now we're gonna chain four and do our three double crochets, chain one, all the way around until we get to the space before the chain four. So now I'm in that last space before that chain four. So I did my three double crochets. I'm chain one and place two double crochets in that space. And I'm gonna slip stitch in that third chain of that chain four. And I'm going to repeat rows one and two, and I'm gonna do a total of five rows. So I'm just gonna do my chain three, two double crochets, chain one, my three double crochets. So I'm almost to the end of the third row. I just placed a three double crochets, just chain one, slip stitch into that third chain that we started with, chain four, and then just continue your rows. So now I finished my five rows, one, two, three, four, five. And now we're just gonna start working on the cuff. So chain up three and place 
one double crochet in that last double crochet of this group so you're skipping one place one double crochet in the first and last skipping that middle double crochet and you're gonna do this going all the way around So one double crochet in that first double crochet, skip that middle one of the little cluster and the double crochet in that last group. Going all the way around and I'll meet you when I get back to this chain three space. Just finished that round and now I'm slip stitching in the second chain of that chain three. So right in there. Now you're gonna chain up three and we're gonna do front post and back post double crochet. It's kind of like my favorite ribbon thing going on. So to do your front post, you just go under the post as if you're doing a regular double crochet. Pull through, yarn over, and complete your double crochet. So that is a front post double crochet. Now we're going to work that back post double crochet. So yarn over behind the post. Yarn over, pull through, and just complete your double crochet. So that's what we're doing for the whole cuff. Front post, back post, front post, back post. So yarn over, pull through. This is the front post double crochet. Now yarn over behind the post, pull through, and the back post double crochet. So just repeat all the way around. So now I am at my last stitch. For the end of the round, you slip stitch right into the second chain of the chain three. Just like that. And repeat those steps, chain three, and do your front post where there's a front post and a back post where there is a back post double crochet. So continue to repeat those steps for however long you want your cuff. You just chain up three, do your front post double crochet, back post double crochet all the way around, slip stitch into that second chain of that chain three and repeat. So I'm going to finish my cuff. I do a total of 13 rows and I'll be back when I'm done. Okay, so now I'm on my last stitch of my 13th row. Going to slip stitch in that second chain. Going to chain up one. Going to go right ahead and cut my yarn. Pull through. And this is how it looks. Super cute, stretchy and all that. Now my ribbon measure a total of five inches. So this is what we have so far. It's looking good. This is just one half. And the easy part, you're just gonna repeat the same steps for the second half. So from the shoulder seam down, I got a total of 18 inches. And mind you, I'm doing a size small. And from the this part over here down to the edge of the ribbon, I got a total of 25 inches. Hopefully that helped with some type of reference. So now I'm gonna weave all these ends in and all that. And then I'm gonna make my second panel. And once I'm done, I'll be right back so we can put it together and do our thing and wrap it up. So now we're gonna go ahead and seam up the back. I'm gonna use the same technique that I did with the mattress stitch that I did earlier in the video. I'll link a video below on how to do the mattress stitch, but you could do any technique that you're comfortable with. So just go ahead and seam all the way down to the edge 
making sure you secure and match up each clusters just how like how we did the shoulder seam exactly how we did that so i'm gonna go ahead and do that and i'll be back when i'm done so i finished the seam and now we're gonna work on the bottom now you could do this any length but i'm gonna do the same exact thing we did here without skipping the middle stitch of the cluster either way you know i'm gonna show you so just attach your yarn at the corner chain up you can do two or three but <laughs> chain up three because that's what i've been doing throughout this tutorial and we're gonna go ahead and place one double crochet in each stitch all the way down so going with that first double crochet i'm just tucking the tail in so i don't have to weave that in double crochet in the next stitch and that third double crochet of that cluster and then the double crochet right where the chain is at and we're going to do that going all the way down just one double crochet in each stitch including that chain one space so that's how it looks so far okay so now i'm at the end I'm just gonna chain up three and we're gonna do exactly how we did the rib cuff with front post, double crochet, and then back post. So you just turn your work and simply work your rows just like how we did the ribbed cuff. Nothing different. So I have my chain, do your front post, and then your back post double crochet so I did the front post back post double crochet and then front post so that's all I'm doing for the bottom part ribbing exactly how we did the cuff so I'm gonna do my rows and come right back so you just go all the way down and you place one double crochet in the previous chain three space from the row before that and just repeat what's on the screen so i'm coming towards the end of that front post back post row so i just have a back post double crochet left and now just place a double crochet in that chain three you're going to chain up three Turn your work. And you start by going into the post. So not going into that very, I guess you call it like that first stitch. Just go right into the post with your either front post or back post double crochet. And you'll just repeat these rows for however long you want your ribbing. So I finished my ribbon. I actually did a total of seven rows. Now, usually if you've seen any of my tutorials, I would match it up with the ribbon on the sleeve, but I really like how this fall on me for this sweater, but feel free to do however many rows you want. In my other sweaters, I did 12 rows or 13 rows. Either way, just do what is best for you. I like how it falls on my waist with the jeans and ooh, mm, 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 uh. So now that that is done, just chain up one, cut your yarn, pull through to finish off. So you wanna go ahead and attach your yarn right at the edge of the ribbing so we can work our way up and around. So we're just gonna place a double crochet in each stitch around. So this don't have to be perfect, you just don't wanna jam too many stitches cause it's really nowhere like how we got our little stitches here is not along the ribbon. So you could just simply place a double crochet in that first row and then you could do two per row right along the side 
And you could just do that up your whole ribbon. And now I'm at that chain one space, or the chain two space right here. Just gonna place one double crochet. So just place one double crochet in each stitch going down. And one double crochet in that chain one space right there. And just repeat that down to the edge where we hit the collar right here. So I'll meet you when we get here. Okay, so now I'm at that corner and just place four double crochets at that corner and just evenly distribute double crochets along this rough edge for the collar. It do not have to be perfect. So I'm at the other corner of the collar and just do your four double crochets and then place one double crochet right along exactly how we did the other side down to the ribbon. Just, just distribute the double crochets evenly. Make sure they're not bunched up. And I'll meet you when I get back to the end. Okay, so now I just went into my last stitch and you just chain up one. We rarely do that, right? Turn our work. You're gonna single crochet in the first three stitches. So that's one, two, three. And now for a simple four double crochet bobble, you yarn over, go through the stitch, as if you're doing a double crochet, pull through, yarn over, through the first two. Don't finish that. So that we count that as the first one. We don't count this one. She just, you know, trying to be part of the team. So that's our first of the bobble. Yarn over, do the same stitch, pull through, and go through the first two loops. So that's the second one. I'm gonna repeat, yarn over, do the stitch, pull through, do the first two loops. So that will be three of the bobble. Yarn over, do the same stitch again, pull through, go through the first two loops. Now you have a total of five loops on your hook. Now you're gonna yarn over and pull through all of the loops. After that, do three single crochets. Don't worry, I'm gonna do this again. Two and three. Now for the bobble, all in that same stitch, the well, the next stitch, yarn over. And you're gonna do your double crochet, but not finish it. Just go through those first two. So that's one, again, through the first two. That's two. That's three. And then that's four. So you have a total of five loops on your hook. You yarn over and you just complete that. Go through all the stitches. And that's how our little bobble look on the other side. Three single crochets. And then bobble stitch. I'm gonna do it one more time. Yarn over as if you're doing your double crochet. Just go through the first two loops. Don't finish. And you're gonna do that three more times. Do the same stitch. So that's two. Three. Four, yarn over through all of them. And then three single crochets. So just complete that all the way around. And that is how it look. Hope you could see it well on camera. So I'm just gonna complete that all the way around. That's all I'm doing is the three single crochet bobble, 
three single crochets. So I finished going all the way around with the bobble. It is so cute to me. Like, okay, I see you, sis. Now, so after your bobble roll, just go ahead, chain one, and place a single crochet in every stitch. Making sure you go into that bobble, stitch right there, and that's all it is to it. And you want to go all around, back till you get to the ribbon. And that's how it look, and I'll see you when I'm done with my single crochet. So I went all the way around with my single crochet. I'm just going to chain up one. Cut my yarn. Pull through. And this is how she looks. Just weaving that in, and there you go. Thank you so much for watching. Now, if you made this cardigan, make sure you tag me at Ladria Love Bay Baby. Y'all are so creative. I love y'all so much. See you in my next video. Hey, hey, peace.